All right. Part two, this will be a short one. Um, Venezuelan prepper looks back, things I would have done differently if I knew what was coming. Uh, Global Economic Reset 2018 is a channel. Shout out to that channel. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. All right. Oh, let's pick it up about there. Yeah. So it was all great until the apocalypse started. Well, the apocalypse, the poppy clips ain't started yet. The fun has not begun. Not going to be fun. It's going to be difficult. We have to pull together. The more people refuse to work together, the harder it's going to be. You know. So we talked about the uh, a large enough place, um, and that's what I have been advocating, have been for quite some time. Uh, that you need a place large enough to have a chance of surviving. And that's what this region is. A lot of people need to survive, let's say 50 million people in this country and around the world. This region is capable of handling that many people. Um, if they work together, if they fight each other, then no, it's not. I've had some people get here recently, extremely depressing. Uh, People have not been hand treated well by other believers, quote unquote. People that said they were Christians that were going to help take care of them, treating them very poorly. I, I just, and I'm not up, I'm not there down in northwest Arkansas. I'm up here. I can't say whose story is right. You know, there's three sides to every story three yours, mine, and the truth. I'm up here. I'm not there. I don't need to hear both sides of the story. I can't, I'm not the judge, I'm not the jury, but there's some unhappy people. They're not getting along. This is not cool. I have had friends, let me tell you how kingdom economics works in my viewpoint. Uh, there's two people I can think of in particular. That my family and them interacting with each other, we have both said, both these two friends in different situations, and my family, my wife, or whatever, we have both said with tears in our eyes, I don't know how I can ever repay you for everything that you have done for me or for us. They said that to us, we said that to them. That is kingdom economics. If you don't feel that way about people, there's something wrong. You know, if you're imagining living in community with someone if you can't give everything and feel like that's what you're there to do is to give and to help and to serve well if you're if if, if we're going to get together and expect to be served and be helped and be waited on number one nobody's going to serve you nobody's going to wait on you unless they're exceptional so i, I don't know it's just I was listening to a snippet the other day of a Torah teacher. Uh, Jerry King was here. Caddy Wumpus McDougal. And he's listening to a guy, and the guy said, you know, Messiah took made himself of no reputation. He, he took himself out of the comfort zone. And this man travels all over, up in Idaho, has a ministry up there. But he'll go do Sabbath service with somebody in Indiana or Florida if someone calls and requests him. He travels. He said, I, I'm not here for my own comfort. I'm here to serve. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. You know, I mean, it made me feel better. Because, I mean, I've been, that's why I lit, sleep on an army cot. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to help other people. I want to be able to go and do what he's talking about doing. So part of one thing that came out of Passover, Pentecost, amen, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. <laughs> sorry, Pentecost, was, you know, that, that desire, that, I mean, that, that is, I know that needs to be done, I know there needs to be headquarters, I know there needs to be um, people helping each other, and so I'm just saying, where I am at right now, where I just happen to be at right now, this is headquarters. Uh, if, if you all out there listening, and I'm hoping that fairly soon here a lot more people will be listening to me, uh, there's a new channel, Homestead Channel, Home Skillet. 
I like them. Pastor Joe Fox gave them a shout out. They went from two subscribers. Joe pa Joe was his, their second subscriber to over 4,000 subscribers in a matter of a few days. I have less than 4,000 after 30 some years of work. Okay, after being on YouTube since 2000 and whatever, I don't even know. But Joe Fox got together with me and my wife at his place in High Prairie Acres, Kansas, 2014, our last anniversary. 2015, I got a divorce for my anniversary. But uh, point point is, is that's okay. Since 2014, I went home. He encouraged me to get on YouTube. I went home, started this new channel, got my book out there, read it online, and I've got over 500 videos up. I am trying to help people stay alive. This young couple now with 4,000 subscribers are just city folks that absolutely know nothing and admit that they know nothing, which is cool, and don't have a plan and say they don't have a plan, and they don't really have anything you know, other than this is what we did and this is what we're going to do. They don't have anything to share much. So... I just hope more people will be listening. Okay, so headquarters, association to help people move, help people relocate, help people get established like this couple, Home Skillet. I wrote them, I said, hey, I don't know where you're at, but I'm here in Fairgrove. How far are you? I'd like to help, you know, be able to share information. So, all right, anyway, think outside the box. Uh, and I'm just going to run out of gas here and time and memory and everything else. So so if you are a prepper, there comes a point after your preps have been consumed, there is no way to keep living in order to survive. We have to make choices. Okay. Um, this is not going to be easy. You're not most likely going to end up gathered around a bonfire singing kumbaya, roasting hot dogs and marshmallows while the entire country falls apart in cities after the last hot dog has been eaten and there is no way to replenish supplies, that is when the bad weather starts. Without enough resources and the proper mindset, like being ready to eat fish every day, for instance, if you have a river close enough, good point about moving to Missouri, there is there's huge rivers with a huge fish population all over the state. River systems, ri rivers that look like, Lake of the Ozarks looks like a giant dragon. It's not a it's not a river, it's a lake. It's huge. It dwarfs the imagination. All right, so anyway. Um, bottom there, this is the most important thing. You must try living with less. Get rid of stuff. Everything you could not take with you in two or three big three-ton trucks, a couple of RVs. Yeah, I've about done that. I can need a couple semis. <laughs> That's all I need is a couple semis. I'm not telling you to sell everything you've accumulated, but how are you going to take it if you have to move? That's one thing people don't realize. How am I going to get what I have, where I was? And this is something that, you know, people have been faced with. You know, I was. Uh, I made it successfully here with most of my stuff. Um, Margot crammed everything she had in a van. Van died. Catalytic converter fried. Pretty predictable. Um, shipped the stuff ahead of time. It's one solution. Get a bigger vehicle. You know, she's. You know, everybody is bemoaning decisions made, and I'm not knocking anything. Any decision she made, she tried to get here in the time frame that she felt was appropriate. So, but our species survived by its nomadic culture. That is something that um, is comforts me in these days. The most.